Hello and welcome. I am Berg's Dip Reviews and today a little topic video. I'm uh, going to throw in some Grizzly Wintergreen but this will be on tobacco tax classes. Uh, so basically, and that is going to be the end of this can. I have made a little piece on taxes before, but it was many years ago. So, basically all tobacco products sold in the U.S. Um, fall into categories for the purposes of the federal government. And although the federal government isn't necessarily the one... Uh, putting the bulk of the tax burden on tobacco it's mostly the states themselves and that's why you see so many swings from one state to the next they do have something to do with it and since 2009 when things were changed a bit is that's basically the last time the taxes had been bumped up and in that um, not so much in dip and chew, but outside of that is where the loopholes kind of emerged. Um, so basically, your main tax classes are C, chewing tobacco, M for snuff, and snus gets thrown in there as well, uh, basically because they didn't have anywhere else to put it. Pipe tobacco is L, roll your own, or cigarette tobacco is J, Cigars don't have a code, but they're further divided into small or little and large. Small, uh, the distinction is that they weigh less than three pounds per thousand. And we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, and there are also Class A small and Class B cigarettes with the same distinction that small cigarettes weigh less than three pounds per thousand. Nobody that I was able to locate even makes Class B cigarettes anymore. Nat Sherman, the specialty retailer that Marlboro just bought out um, at one time apparently did, but I guess it was more hassle than it was worth for them. So I don't, nobody is doing it anymore. Um, so, anyway, uh, I'm going to go through what the federal level tax is on each of these. So, on cigarettes, it is a dollar and sixty-six hundredths of a cent. We'll call it a dollar one. The reason it's like that is they price it per thousand. So, it's fifty dollars and thirty-three cents per thousand. Cigars are 52.75% of the manufacturer's price with a cap of 40.26 cents per cigar. Anyway, there has been a loophole in, and, and you know, I, I did not confirm whether that's small or large, but there has been a loophole that's emerged with cigars um, that I've looked into a little bit. Basically, for a long time, they could get away with low or no tax on little cigars, so it was an appropriate substitute for cigarettes. As governments, a lot of states caught on to this and said little cigars, as they are classified, are going to be taxed the same as cigarettes. So what they've done is they've upped the weight in them, uh, so stuff like Cheyenne, uh, what's another brand? Crisscross, those real cheap stuff, if you've noticed, they weigh a lot. I only had them one time, but the things weigh a lot. They've upped the, the weight to get into the upper, to the large cigar category, and thus 
they end up paying less. They end up paying nothing to Pennsylvania, but uh, most states have some kind of tax on it. So that's the one loophole. The next one goes uh, down into cigarette tobacco. In 09, they raised the roll your own tax to $24.78 a pound. Compare that to pipe tobacco. $2.83 and 11 hundredths of a cent per pound. So, um, as you can see, there's a significant difference there. It's, uh, roll your own is almost a hundred times more in tax. So, since I've spent a fair amount of time in tobacco stores shopping for this channel, uh, you will notice that when they have large bags of what appears to be rolling tobacco, it will actually say pipe tobacco on it. That is the other loophole. Um, the stuff labeled cigarette tobacco in Roll Your Own is rapidly decreasing. Uh, you know, there are only a handful of people still calling it that for that reason. Um, so on snuff or snooze, the federal tax is $1.51 per pound, which comes out to, according to the math they did, not me, 11.3 cents per 1.2 ounce can. So it's relatively insignificant. Um, and chew is 50.3 cents per pound or 9.4 cents per 3 ounce bag. Again, relatively insignificant. The bulk of your tax will be paid to whatever state you live in. Um, at the time I made this video the last time, which was a little different than this, Pennsylvania had no tax on cigars, snuff, chew, pipe, nothing. So it made this channel very convenient for me at the beginning because everything was so cheap. However, in 2016, they decided to, I think the chew and dip is 55 cents an ounce. So you're talking a dollar and, you know, 50 plus cents uh, per three ounce bag. You're talking, I don't know, 60 cents on a can of dip. You know, the, the price difference we noticed more in stuff like tubs, 16 ounce bags of chew, stuff where the weight is higher. Um, but anyway, that's why, you know, your state level activity is going to be why you're paying, I don't know, $12 a can in Massachusetts and you're paying three for the same can in Pennsylvania or whatever. Um, it is also why uh, online cigar retailers survive in Pennsylvania because when they put in all the stuff here, they made cigars exempt due to all kinds of lobbying by these people. So, um, and then cigarettes are a whole other animal. Uh, you're gonna see the lowest price in the basically the tobacco producing states in the south as to kind of protect the economy there um and then states like new york i mean you don't even uh, quit <laughs> but anyway um government likes to do this under the guise of being healthy and looking out for you and all this stuff I would argue that they merely take advantage of the fact that they're addictive products and thus people will continue to buy them no matter what the price is. Or at least a lot of people will continue to buy them. You know, so they... You know, they add these slowly over time. You know, it's not... Most of the time it's not, okay, tax is going up by double today it's more like well it's 50 cents here and 50 cents there and it's gradually so people are just like people just accept it and continue on so that's why I say they do it under this guise of promoting healthiness but at the same time they've
found a constant revenue stream that they can tap into for their exponential future. Um, but as you can see, the industry always finds a way around them as they have, or tries to anyway. Um, I don't know, I just wanted to make something a little different for you today. Um, but that will, one, help you understand why, and is it even on here? Some companies put the tax class on the product and others do not. But if you were wondering, that would be the reason. And I just went through the federal list. I will provide some links where you can look up your state. And then you can see, you know, if you have a neighboring state that's significantly less, you might want to consider it. Um, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, that's about all for this one. If you enjoyed the video, please leave it a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you next time. Take care.